Hi guys, my name is Jin, and welcome to Let's Build. Hey guys, uh, welcome, welcome to Sips and Shins, Hecate's Adventure. Alright my lovers, Farmer Jin here, and I'm here to feed the world. Uh, so Shins left the Yogg's cast amid uh, a bunch of allegations that he was being uh, inappropriate with fans. On the 14th of August, 2019, Yogg's cast member Paul Skies, better known by his username Shin, stepped down following accusations of sexual harassment and pedophilic behaviour. This was after years of accusations levelled against him by dozens of victims and shocked the Yogg's cast community. But what did Shin exactly do? This video will chronicle his history of sexual deviancy, failure to change, as well as the constant managerial failures at Yogg's cast that enabled this behaviour. Alright, let's be- Oh shit! Did you hear that? Are you okay? Is that like cold or something? That wasn't in your nostril, was it? That's disgusting. Oh, shit. I think it was a predator. There's a predator down here. Minecraft, being the best selling game of all time, has been a dominating force in the YouTube space, particularly the Minecraft Let's Play genre of videos. However, this wasn't always the case. The earliest pioneers of the genre were Paul Sears Jr., X Plays, and the Yogscast. The Yogscast YouTube presence, being at the time comprised of Lewis and Simon, had a different spin on things. They added roleplay and story elements to their series. Okay, these boys here, they're ready to go. Daisy awaits me! Oh god, of course, Daisy. I completely forgot about her. <laughs> We've got to rescue her, Lewis. Let's go. Enlisting the aids of friends that act as characters. This is how Shin first got involved with Minecraft on YouTube, playing as the main antagonist, Israfel. Oh, look. Look, there's some arrows. Some arrows that... Oh, come on. Where are they coming from? Uh... Maybe it's a... Is it coming oh, from God. downstairs? Oh, God. He's downstairs, Simon. He's downstairs. Oh, for God's sake. With the Yogscast rapidly growing success, Lewis and Simon realised that their friends could get in on this gold mine. So in 2012, many friends from their World of Warcraft guild, Ye Olde Goonie Squad, started to create Minecraft content. Shin was one of these friends, uploading his first video on February 7th, 2012. He would continue to create Minecraft content throughout, with his popular build videos and co-op let's plays with Sips, propelling him to 100,000 subscribers. Hey guys, 100,000 subscribers! Fantastic. I want to say a big thank you to all of you guys and girls who like what I do. It's a genuine pleasure and honour to be able to entertain you guys and, uh, and I hope I continue to do so. This was the beginning of the YouTube e-celebrity, the idea that someone could become an online celebrity through creating YouTube content. However, not everybody were equipped or worthy of this idol status as our subject Shin would showcase. Before the days of Twitter, some YouTubers would decide to use Facebook as a means to keep in contact with their community. The Yogscast had a thriving Facebook community, Shin being an active user on the website. Unfortunately, the conversations that Shin would have with his fans were not of an appropriate nature. Shin would constantly flirt and request nude images from fans as young as 16. Shin was 28 at the time. Here is an excerpt of one of his conversations. Haha, ha, reverse psychology. It's almost like you're considering it. Possibly, but I can't really hee hee do it. I would, if I could. Oh, you mean you don't have a camera? I do, but it's against my morals to send pictures, hee hee. Ha ha, see this is why I said you shouldn't. Hee hee, the real question is, what does Shin look like IRL? It's against my morals to send pictures. Oh, I see. I have a personal Facebook account on my friends list. Maybe you could guess who I am. Really? Well, let the search begin. Okay, you need a hint of some kind because there's tons of guys on here. What time is it where you are? 2.40 AM. Whoa, I was up to that time last night. You got me so excited with your temptations and sending me that picture, and now I feel like I can't go to sleep until I see it. Haha, <laughs> I'm a tease. I'm sorry, hee hee. Haha, hmm. Okay, so what if we meet halfway and I can see you in your underwear? 
Hmm, maybe. And you could even pull the sides front and back, just enough to keep it still safe. Haha, ha, I'll think about it. Haha, ha, do it. In school, I'm taught not to do these things. Break the rules. I don't think I should. Also, didn't you say you had a girlfriend? Haha, ha, uh, you weren't joking about the tease part, but I refused to beg. Note, that this victim was 16 during these conversations and does not live in the UK. She was pressured into sending these pictures by Shin. This is... While well, the screenshots that I just provided surfaced in 2016, many victims during 2012 have openly shared their experiences. This accumulated in the creation of a Tumblr page called Why Shin Why in November. Their first activity would be a reblog of a post by Mustache Rainbow that states, A public service announcement to Shin's Facebook friends. You may have been contacted by Shin asking for sex or maybe complimenting your profile picture. He is doing this to lots of girls. He is convincing girls to send him naked pictures. I have accounts of over 10 girls who have spoken to him. If you have been contacted by Shin, please ask this blog and we are forming an alliance. We need to talk Paul. The Tumblr account will publish in total the experiences of four victims across the period of November to December. These accusations would be met with mixed reactions from fans, many misunderstanding UK laws on sexual conduct and consent. Under the Sexual Defences Act 2003 Section 9, sexual communications with a child, a child is considered anybody who's younger than 18. For the purpose of sexual gratification, it's a criminal offence and can lead to imprisonment for two years. The Protection of Children Act 1978 criminalises the distribution and possession of pornographic material of a child. The sentencing for this is complex, but Shin most likely is a level 1 or level 2 in the levels of indecency scaling. Since some of the girls are not located in the UK, I'm unable to determine what crimes he could be prosecuted for, or if he can even be prosecuted at all. But you get my point. What Shin did was illegal, and would have landed him on the sex offenders registry. In the screenshots that I have provided, Shen uses various tactics to sex text and gain sexual photos from fans. He uses his authority as an idol to these fans to gain trust and to manipulate them. Because they adore Shin so much and see him as an authority figure, they don't want to displease him, so they go along with it. This is called an authority bias. Grooming is another common tactic of sexual predators. Through constant over-sexualization of the victim, Shin normalizes these conversations. Isolating the victim, making sure that they don't tell anybody else about the types of conversations the victim is having with Shin, is something he explicitly asks for. This constant poking and prodding, testing the waters to see how receptive the victim is, is extremely manipulative and a clear sign that Shin is well aware of what he's doing. He begins by initiating, seeing if the victim will respond in kind, and if they do, then he will begin to ramp up the sexual behaviour. In the end of this saga, Shin is confronted and states this, Please don't burn my life to cinders, I am begging. I did those things ages ago, I have stopped. I still talk to some people I used to know, but I don't ask them for nudes. I'm so sorry, I can't live with myself if this gets out. I spent hours crying this morning. It still might all be over, and you have my word, everything stops. Spoiler alert, it doesn't. The year is 2016. After the Yogg's cast incorporate, they have continued to grow rapidly. Shin's channel was doing well too, being on the verge of 2 million subscribers. However, soon controversy will strike again. On April 16th, 2016, a comprehensive Tumblr post by user WhiteCatGeek would discuss their experiences with Shin. I encourage you to pause the video and to read these messages. He starts off by stating this. The premise this, before this happened, I became acquaintances with Kim. This was free being one of the first people to talk to her on Facebook when she became an official member of the Yux cast. I drew her fan art, we chatted occasionally, she was extremely supportive and gave me kind words when things were difficult and we were in regular contact. This also leads me to sometimes speaking with Hannah, who again was nothing but awesome to me. I once came across a, pretty awful to be honest, Tumblr that is dedicated to this idea that Shin is predatory and harass slash news to harass underage girls online, ask them for nudes, etc. And I briefly discussed this with Hannah because I was a huge fan and it shocked me so much. So. Over two years ago, I did a stupid thing. I used the Tumblr that I had for posting silly, cute, vaguely not safe for work things to send Shin and ask. I was feeling risky, a daredevil, and stupidly impulsive. I basically asked him what hotel he was staying at for rest, which was the same weekend as an anime convention in the nearby hotel. He mentioned said con in one of his rare vlogs. It was an outright flirtatious message. He responded that he didn't know which hotel and said, sorry, I have a girlfriend. 
I was a dickhead. I continued to send flirty asks and was like, hey, on the off chance that you change your mind, here's my Skype username. Minutes later, lying in bed whilst my now ex partner slept next to me and I poodled around on the iPod. Shin asked me to Skype. I freaked out. I felt sick, nervous, excited, sick. So sick. I was terrified. Was this real? What was I doing? Did he expect sex from me? What was going on? Now, before I continue, I want to state that at this time, the victim was 26 and Shin was 29. This is not an instance of child exploitation. However, this case demonstrates several important things. That Shin is willing to have sexual conversations with a fan and try to coerce a fan into having sex with him. You could argue that the power imbalance here is a form of grooming. The suspicious activity that occurs internally within the Yogscast when the victim tries to report Shin is the most damning part of this case and explains why nothing had been done about Shin. And finally, that this case acts as a catalyst for many other victims to step forward and it's the first time the Yogscast respond to any of the Shin accusations. Shin would begin a correspondence with White Cat, sprinkling hints of his intention between normal conversations. So were you just like super horny the day you sent those messages or something? Ha, huh, I think I just had a really derpy brain moment, thinking I wonder if Shin would respond to that kind of thing, and here we are. I respond to most asks, except for ones I've already answered a million times. The fact that you keep bringing those Tumblr asks up makes me think that the horny one is you. Haha, ha, maybe it is, but I love my girlfriend very much, so don't get your hopes up. Are you starting to change your mind? About what? About next weekend? What about next weekend? What you suggested? You don't want to cheat on your girlfriend, remember? Yeah, I don't, and I won't. But I don't know, you seem to deflect saying that you never actually wanted to do it. And I'm trying to work out how true that was. Thanks. About to leave, so if I said yes, you'd say yes? Are you still hitting on me? Haha, ha, no. Haha, uh -huh. I haven't hit on you yet. I'm just replying to you hitting on me out of curiosity. Do you want to have sex this weekend? Sorry, I will stop teasing and keep it strictly friendly. Haha, uh -huh. you are a terrible flirt. Haha, uh -huh. that wasn't really flirting really, was it? Okay, I don't know. I better head to the office. White Cat would eventually decide to email Yogcast Kim about these conversations. I'd like to preface this by saying that you please, please do not talk to the involved parties about this. I do believe that you won't, but I figured I'd ask. When we bumped into you at the Hilton before rest, I didn't know that you'd be staying at the Hilton. The reason that I knew this is because I'd been speaking to Shin a little while before Rez last Kidicon. I did something really stupid, I mean unimaginably dumb, and I still feel awful for doing it. One day I had a complete lapse in judgement and decided to use my alternative Tumblr account to send Shin an ask. I guess what we had previously discussed about Shin's possible past actions on the internet was playing on my mind that day for some reason and I sent him a flirtatious ask. Since then we've spoken on and off quite a bit. He did originally flirt with me and kept trying to make suggestions about that weekend and told me you'd all be staying at the Hilton. Sometimes he was friendly and polite and spoke about how much he loves his girlfriend and other times he asked inappropriate and slightly manipulative questions after I explained that I was all bark and no bite and wasn't actually interested. I don't really know where I'm going with this. Thank you so much if you've managed to read all of this. I'm really sorry and if I caused any trouble or awkwardness or anything at all, I'm so sorry. Thanks for telling me too about all this. I know it must have been hard for you to come forward about it. Sorry as well for pushing you towards Shin at the Hilton. I can see now why you were super shy. As for what to do, I want to ask you, do you mind if I talk to Hannah about this? The reason being that Shin should not be giving out our information about where we're staying at conventions. Not only is it inappropriate, but it's a security risk for all of us. Prior to events, we get given a list of rules and guidelines to follow and the number one is not to let people know where we're staying or where we're going to be. Let me know your thoughts. Why Cat would let Hannah be informed about the situation? I'm sorry to hear Shen is questioning you right now. He should not be putting you in this position in the first place. I know you feel guilty, but the fact is that none of this is your fault. Shin is out of line and has been ever since he first messaged you and tried to flirt with you. He was wrong to give you details about where we were staying and he's wrong to be pressuring you now. You really shouldn't be feeling guilty at all or apologize for anything. You were right to bring Shin's behavior to my attention because he's very close to making some big mistakes that could ruin his career. My advice is to go offline tonight and not reply to anything Shin sends to you. He's crossed the line and he should not be putting you in this position. Leave it with me and I'll sort this out. If Shin sends you anything else or becomes hostile, please get in contact with me. You do not deserve this. Kim and Hannah then would ask for evidence, which White Cat would provide. I want to highlight this part of the email. The problem is that it comes to our attention that this isn't an isolated incident and we need to talk to Shin before this entire situation gets out of control. Thanks for this, Nephis. I know how hard this whole situation must be for you and you really cannot stress how much we are concerned about you. And yes, you figured out the reason why we're so concerned. While his conversations with you are between two consenting adults and you held your ground, it worries us that he could be talking to younger, more vulnerable people. And we really don't want a repeat. 
of past mistakes. However, somehow, despite the fact that emails of this nature should be private, Shin found out about them. Why caught on this states? This should have all just ended here, except Shin knew I had been talking about him. Out of the blue, he asked me if I had been speaking to Kim, and on Twitter, she told me outright to ignore him, log off, just get out of the situation. But I felt so sorry for him. He was so insecure, and kept talking about how lonely he was, and I was filled with so much guilt, so I confessed to him. But how did he know? He knew the contents of those emails, they were not confidential. To this day, I do not believe that Kim or Hannah, who also had access to later emails, told him. I just do not want to believe that. I believe that, much like in many businesses, other staff members have access to the emails. There is someone always looking out for Shin, and from speaking to another member of the Uggscast that I shall not name, I believe that Lewis is specifically protecting him, and I know that Lewis is aware of past behaviours that got Shin in trouble, all of this and no doubt any other later scenarios. He told me that he wasn't allowed to talk to me anymore, bid farewell and blocked me from Skype. A couple of months after these events, White Cat would get in contact with the supposed victim of Shin. However, due to the fact that the specific accusations leveled by this person have no accompanying evidence, I will not include them, but you can read them in the Tumblr post. Now, since this pattern of predatory behaviour has emerged again, and that Shin has clearly broken Yogscast company rules, how will management react to this? Fuck you! Oh. Five days after the initial post, Lewis and Terps drunkenly discuss the accusations against Shin. I won't show the entire livestream, but will show the appropriate sections. People are saying a lot about this, the, like the Shin drama, right? Mm. How it needs to be talked about. I knew about this like three years ago. Basically, for those of you who don't know, Tumblr loved to talk about how Shin was chatting up girls on... On Tinternet, twi yeah. On Twitter or, or DM or whatever, or chatting up ladies. Gentle ladies, yeah, and gentlemen, yeah, you know, it's, it's, whatever. Not really even chatting them up, just chatting to people, yeah. On, and a lot of people found it very inappropriate. A lot of people thought that he was being a bit too flirty or being a bit too rude, and it really annoys me that people have blown this up out of proportion. Recently, um, we had to make Minty redundant. She's obviously Shin's ex-girlfriend. There's a lot of dirty laundry around the whole thing. She holds a bit as a bit of an axe to grind, being an ex-girlfriend, but also being made redundant. And to be honest, Minty's, Minty's, Minty was great. Um, you know, he, her being made redundant had nothing to do with her work ethic and her job no. here. Lewis goes on to make a claim that Minty, one of Shin's axes that has taken White Cat's side and explained her own experiences with Shin, is only doing this because she was recently sacked by the Oxcast. Minty has stated that several people have went to the Oxcast about Shin, but nothing was ever done about it. She elaborates that while she was with Shin, she discovered several different disturbing conversations, that he catalogued many different mobile phone numbers, that he screenshotted images that were sent to him by girls over Snapchat, and that he cheated on her with 30 plus girls on the internet. Again, the Ox cast don't seem to care about this. And it's, it's bringing up what I consider to be nothing, right? Three years ago or whatever, they were in a relationship. It's been, been that long since they broke up. Yeah. She had a problem with him because he was... I don't think their relationship was going very well. I don't think it's unreasonable. Well, this is all dirty laundry stuff, but it's out there. Um, you know, Minty sort of says that, you know, that Shin was chatting to women on the internet. And if you've got a relationship that's going sour, who can blame him, right? <laughs> It's tough. As far as we're aware, you know, no wrongdoing, you know, occurred um, in terms of, you know, it was it was between consenting adults. Yeah, that's being the most important consenting thing, right? adults. So no, when I think that what I really angers me is that people are on Tumblr seem to be making some sort of concerted effort to try and make Shin apologize for nothing, for being a man or just for talking to people. Or, or I looked at it at the time and I was like, this is bullshit. So, fuck off, right? And it pisses me off. Really does when people try and bring up this shit. Mm. Like, who cares if, if Shin cheated or not? Do you know what? It's not even that he... And, I, and I'm pretty sure he didn't, but there's certainly no evidence of that and no one's coming out saying no, that no, he well, cheated. Exa exactly. Or I anything mean, that's, like that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, it's not like he even did something that would be morally slightly inappropriate. So... <sighs> I don't even know where to begin with this. If Lewis had actually read any of White Cat's messages or the messages from 2012, he would clearly say that Shin was cheating on his girlfriend with fans. The fact that he doesn't realise this is disturbing. He didn't even do anything morally inappropriate. He sex text with fans and received nudes from underage victims. I would also like to note that a few weeks before this, Lewis stated in a board meeting that he didn't want members doing sexy stuff with fans at events. Surely this applies to sexual stuff in general with fans, or does that only apply to people that aren't friends with you, Lewis? 
I don't think we're trying to <laughs> cover a anything giant up. Banana here, outside, right? sorry. Because there's, there's, if, you know, if, if, if anyone has any real problems with anything that is, I think really this is, this isn't. is the more important. This is an important message. Do you know what, I like, think honestly, an important message. No, that, no, but that, if you, if you ever have any wrongdoing done to you, please, 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 please do not come to us. Any other members of the Oxcast, we are not tra trained professionals. No. We don't know how to help you. We don't know how to advise you. We don't know anything. Please there go are to like of proper help people, proper at your authorities and or, or and organizations. The world in the internet is is, you know, a place that you have to pay attention on, and it's 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 always been that way. The reality is is that we were we we take serious things very seriously. Okay. Mm. Anything that is actually wrongdoing is serious. But if you start talking about me being flirting on the internet with girls as allegations or some sort of some sort of abuse or things or malicious or deception or any of these words that, that are not right r ah. real, and you start making headlines, fuck you. Three years ago, you know, Sheen is chatting to some people on Twitter or in his personal Facebook or whatever, and. These people are all consenting adults and, you know, his chat messages get posted on Tumblr and he gets portrayed as some kind of, you know, if they can edit these things or even if they're fake, it's, you know, there's, it's, it's kind of not okay. And I don't like it coming up again like it's some sort of, because it's like a ghost from our past haunting us. This will no, be no. the last time, because this is going to be the last time I address this. Yeah, but it won't... I, um, and from from the very little screenshots that we have from three years ago, I am gonna always, you know, take the side of, of of my friend who's who I trust and. Your friend is a fucking sexual predator and a nonce. And people were chatting about it in chat, mm. so I thought it was time for me to say something, even though I don't want to. Mm. And it, but I feel like if I don't say something, which is fuck you, to all the people who are making a mountain out of a molehill. Um, or trying to drum up drama when none exists. Fuck you. I don't want to turn this into a, like a, 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 a witch hunty them versus us thing. It's not. All we're saying is, you know, we've given a statement, I guess. And uh, yeah, if we'll see how well... that goes. <sighs> Having to edit, script, and watch this part of the video was honestly incredibly distressing. I've watched the Yuck's House since I was nine, seeing someone who really defined my childhood lie and slander victims of his predatory friend is really disappointing. After this, three more victims would come out. The first won't have any screenshots, but their post has so many specific details about Shin that I do encourage you to read it in your own time. The second would be one of his own moderators that resigned over the Lewis and Terps livestream, stating that Shin flirted with them and that he does flirt with fans. The last victim to come out posted this screenshot, which you saw at the start of the video. I want to end this section with what Hannah said on Tumblr. I'm not protecting anyone. I've passed along every concern to Terps and Lewis that I was sent from the original incident all the way through until recently, as that's what I was asked to do by them. I expressed concern over staying silent, and I was told to urge people to go to the police and follow correct procedure so it's addressed officially. It's not within my part to take any form of disciplinary action on him, and it certainly wasn't in my part to blow the whistle on him. You saw tonight who deals with the discipline the content creators, so judge for yourself how it works. Fast forward to 2019, and the Yuck's cast is on fire. Several Yuck's cast members, including this guy, Terps, who was the CEO of the Yuck's cast, was exposed for being predatory and having pedophilic interactions with minors. And our little subject, Shin, isn't going to be left alone by the shitstorm. He's going to be fucking buried. After Yuck's cast member Calf and Terps are exposed, Lewis decides to hire a HR consultant. Lewis tweets out that people should email him if they have any complaints about members and that the Yuck's cast has a strong code of conduct. Yeah, right. On the 16th of July, Shin is taken off the Yuck's cast live streaming schedule and soon after, an investigation into Shin's historical accusations will begin. Shin is taken off the Yuck's con attendees list and after a few weeks of investigations, Shin is forced to step down. Thank. You. Christ. Lewis comments under his resignation post that he received evidence from victims during the 2012 to 2015 period and some more a bit recently. America. Now, it must be over, right? Well, something that I've neglected to discuss during this entire video is the fan reaction to these accusations and... Oh boy, 
or Yogg Scott's fans fucking insane. During this entire period, the past seven years, Yogg's Cal fans have constantly been defending Shin despite all of the evidence. And now that even the Yogg's cast think that he's a fucking sexual predator and a pedophile, what the Yogg's cast fans think? Oh boy, this must be cancel culture. It must be it must be the fucking SJWs or whatever. Your favorite YouTuber's a pedophile. Get over it, you fucking there's some Yogg's fans in, in these fucking Reddit posts, they don't see anything wrong with what Shin did, they see nothing! They they see evidence of him fucking sex texting with 16 year olds and receiving nudes from them and having multiple sexual relations with fans and they're like, oh boy, th there's nothing wrong with this, it's not illegal, it's illegal! It's fucking illegal! I think the, the the fan reaction to this entire thing is really indicative of how uh, the Yogg's cast of fuck this entire situation up. They're just so vague about everything and they just don't want to say it. They just don't want to say it, that he's a sexual predator and a pedophile. That's because that's what he is. And this entire vagueness makes it seem like what he did wasn't that bad. And it's, I think it's definitely contributed him coming back, which he, by the way, he does come back. He comes back to YouTube after this, which uh, we'll talk about later. Okay, listen, during this time when there's obviously an entire police investigation going on in the background, I get it. I get it why they don't want to call him a sexual predator or a pedophile, you know, because they don't want to prevent the, the police investigation, right? But he flees the country, which, by the way, we'll get to that in the later section, but they just don't want to uh, say anything. It's, uh, it's so frustrating. This entire video was so frustrating to me. Mighty Claw, who is the Yogscast moderator and was extremely involved with the exposure of all these predators, makes a series of Discord posts. They go on to explain how there is a lot of evidence that isn't public yet and how horrible it is. You assume all they have is what a few people have leaked. That's not the case, hence the investigation. All we have to go on is stuff the public has seen, which you shouldn't, so you can assume that the claims are baseless. You're not going to be seeing evidence, that's not how it works. I don't think Shin was a predator, just bad at flirting, lol. He definitely was a predator. He hasn't been proven guilty, this is not a court proceeding. I hate this uncertainty limbo of not knowing enough to really take any stance. He broke company code of conduct and had to cut ties. Believe me, you would rather not know the things he said and done. Trust me, Mighty Claw has seen shit. Shin had the fall on his sword, just like Terps. How could Shin do that to Lewis? Nearly fucked his whole company. Most allegations are from before 2016. Yes, but bringing up past actions which aren't illegal, I don't know. Sorry dude, but Shin is just as bad as Calf. Okay, and you've seen this via proof? Yup, from many people, some even friends. You don't have to remember him as a monster, but it's not healthy to carry on the fakir that he just did a bit of cringe flirting. I mean, he did that too. I think you're taking it a bit too far crusading against Shin now, Claw. But yeah, I really wish I could wipe my brain like a men in black. I'm not crusading, lol. It's not fun talking to crying girls terrified of the community. It's not fun reading and looking at gross exchanges. It's not fun realizing people you had so much fun watching and supporting and helping are deeply troubled. The problem with everyone asking for proof is that it's immediately rejected as fake. You can't win. I've not seen the proof that you claim has been rejected. All I've seen is the girl replying to the screenshots on Twitter. That's my point. These people tried to prove it and were told to fuck off. It's fake. Well, it wasn't, and now here we are. Three of them are gone. What proof did they provide? Screenshots, photos, texts, videos? Shin's statement is purposely weak, so it doesn't seem that bad. He knows what he did. It's not weak, it's ambiguous. Same shit, different smell. It's not a true reflection of what he did. But Shin's is all digital and easy to fake. And that's why I'm saying it'd be foolish to assume it's a good thing that the investigation is taking so long. Shin is not just digital. Shin isn't just historical. He went after whoever he could get under his thumb. Random thing, does anyone feel like Shin's post on the subreddit sounds like he doesn't really want to admit he was wrong? Yeah, it was weak as piss. I don't think he feels what happened was wrong, questionable maybe. That is not the apology of someone who understands their actions. It sounds like he doesn't want it to block his leader's solo return honestly. Understandable in terms of human nature, but not in terms of accepting what he did. Yeah, 100% it was damage control, so he could come back later and hit the ground running with the solo stuff. Indeed. I mean, I'm sorry if people might think it wasn't appropriate, mate. Come on. 
It's interesting that Reddit all agreed Calf was definitely capable of being gross and they all knew it in the back of their heads, easy to believe when you don't like a person. Shin does the same, nah no way, he's not a bad guy, it was just some unfortunate flirting. I'm talking even if there was no COC or whatever. 28 year old flirting with a 17 year old in any way, what? No, that's weird. I doubt everything behind Shin will be given to the public, it won't, nah. All that stuff that's floating around Twitter is not the worst stuff, sorry Tumblr. I don't think he thinks what he did was wrong, Shin that is. Multiple minors, most younger than 17, might not be considered appropriate by everybody. Yeah, chatting up 14 year olds and sliding into the DMs of every female yog that joins might be inappropriate Shin, okay dude. Shin can carry on thinking he's not in the wrong, but I won't let shit go under the rug again. The dude needs serious help. It's far, far worse than oh sorry, I awkwardly flirted with fans. Two ex-girlfriends he cheated on have backed up the girls making complaints. I am relieved Lewis didn't dismiss it this time. Fuck you! Niju and Minty. Minty collected evidence to turn it in to the authorities, but the girls were reluctant to do anything after the backlash, so nothing happened. Minty got shit on. Legally, he's potentially boned, but that depends on any of the girls want to go through court, which is grilling and scary. So him losing his job is the best form of closure they will get, I expect. Not even close, Calf acted physically as well as online, and he also did shit in person. Daniel, I know you like him, but Shin is deeply troubled. He has done similar to Calf. This isn't mistakes, this is repeated behaviour over years. Not at all, but you have to allow people to accept their mistakes and grow as people from them, which he isn't doing. Yikes, what did Shin exactly do? A lot of inappropriate shit. Shin is honestly lowballing what he's done. His admission will piss a lot of people off because it makes it sound like it was just a bit of inappropriate bounce. A was more than flirting, B involved minors, C the evidence unseen by the public is grim. Shin has very serious problems for years and I hope he can get help and that the people he hurt can start to heal. Yeah, I mean it's not pleasant to admit that stuff, and he may genuinely not see what he did as a problem. Some of the girls have spoken to police. Several more victims will come out with small pieces of evidence, which will all be linked. The Yogg's cast will move on and things will be quiet. Shin was finally dealt with. However, this doesn't mean our story ends here. Obliterating a cancerous parasite like Shin from your organization isn't easy, especially one that's been with the Yogscast since the beginning. On April 24th, 2021, during the COVID lockdown, an Instagram post is leaked showing several Yogscast members in a birthday pub quiz with Shin involved. This would cause quite the controversy, with Yogscast Trot making his own response. Trot explains that it was a birthday Zoom call for somebody that isn't even a part of the Yogscast anymore. I want to make it absolutely clear, I have not interacted with Shin at all since his departure from Yogs. I am not his friend. We joined, he was there, a screenshot was taken. That's what you see there. Tom and Harry would post their own responses, with Tom saying the following. This time last year took a massive mental toll on me as well. Discovering truths about co-workers and especially Shin, who I considered a close friend. At the time and in the months that followed, because of the friendship that we had, I felt it was my duty to try and help him, for his safety and everybody else's. I personally believe that this was the moral thing to do, despite being disgusted by his actions. I want to address the picture of the pub quiz because it's an important issue to many. I had been invited by Lydia to a Zoom call and was uncomfortable to discover that Shin was there. It was the first time I had seen him in months. Lydia and I did not interact with Shin and I haven't seen him since, and I don't want to. And Tom's response. Uh, last summer, in the months following Shin's departure, I and some others wanted to remain in limited contact privately to help him understand what he did wrong, get appropriate help and ensure he didn't hurt himself or others. This was a decision that we didn't take lightly and it was extremely mentally challenging, but I believed at the time it was the morally right thing to do. Given our long-standing prior friendship, I began to completely disassociate with him after the Christmas break as I felt I was no longer helping him and was not helping myself. Many other victims would come out with their stories about Shin. Boy and G Star Games, both content creators for Yogscast, would explain their experiences with Shin in a series of Reddit and Twitter posts. Why should two people lie about this? I thought you grew as a person since 2016, but apparently you still don't believe victims if the abusers are one of your friends. FYI, he has evidence against that too. Of course I believe the victims of Shin and Terps because they fucking well tried it on with me too. There, I said it. Go fuck yourself. Being a woman is bullshit. I'm so sorry and me too. 
love you. We are not owed any more details that Boo or G wish to tell us, but for the sake of the reputation of Shin and Terps, it would be good to hear clarification of what trying it on means. Was it just flirting or something more serious? Bearing in mind neither Shin nor Terps can defend themselves in this. Bloody hell, do you want a play by play? Aggressive flirting, trying to get me the send picks, sending picks, trying to get me to go places and do stuff, not taking no for an answer, asking me to delete correspondence, it wears you down. Apparently, you can't convince some people that even when they are struck off from their jobs and unanimously believed, we have to look after their reputation. Cheers, real fucking thoughtful. Did they know about each other doing it? There are others that give me bad vibes. I guess they knew. I was forced to talk about it today. I am uncomfortable at where the situation may lead me. I don't know why. It's important to set a precedent today so we can go forward in a safe space, similar with black lives. Build it up and make it right so the future can be better. This is all gonna hurt like hell, but we need to do it for the future of everyone. I wanted to mention it at another point. I think this is as good as the time as ever. Shin continued to ask me if I would go back to his flat or if I would hang out when I was in Bristol after he left the Yogg's cast. There was never any insinuation as to what would happen if I went. But I did not feel it was a good idea, especially as I mentioned I was having a panic attack at one point. I do not believe he has changed or will change. He never implied anything, but I felt it was important to note. I have no doubt that now he has nothing to lose, he could do anything. I'm filled with relief. I was so scared for the longest time because of those around me who didn't know all the facts and were just trying to do the right thing with the information that they had. I'm sorry it had to come to this and that it didn't come out sooner. I would go into more detail but the short of it is, thank you. I appreciate you saying this and I feel like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. Thank you, Tom. During this year, Lewis would also apologise for his 2016 drunken freakout. In 2016, screenshots emerged on Tumblr of Shin chatting flirtatiously with fans online. During a livestream and Reddit post, I angrily defended him and insulted those who were sharing the screenshots, something I deeply regret doing and I'm very sorry for. At the time, I thought a few overly sensitive individuals were blowing things out of proportion and getting angry on the behalf of others. I hadn't received any complaints and to me it appeared that no one was heard. So what happened to the complaints that White Cat sent in 2014? I reminded Shin that chatting with fans in this way was not okay and if it were to happen again he would be removed from the Uggscast. Shin was a close friend and I stupidly believed him when he said nothing inappropriate had happened. Last year, a number of women shared their stories with me and I finally realised that he had, in fact, caused a great deal of hurt. I understand now that his position of power allowed him to emotionally manipulate and sexually harass members of our community. I don't think he really understands that his actions were not okay, or the impact of them, but that is no excuse. People were hurt and they continued to come forward. Over the last week, I've seen many courageous women and men share their stories only to be insulted, shamed or threatened with lawsuits or violence and I have been very upset by this. If there's one thing I've learned over the last year, it's the accusations against influencers deserve to be taken seriously, and no speaking up should be met with compassion, respect, and support. Shin would mostly stay quiet. However, he would still talk to fans for Instagram and Twitter. This is how we find out that he's moved to Japan, which, ironic that Shin the fucking pedo would move to the country where the age consent is 13, you know? Uh, the jokes write themselves here. However, 2021 is the year where Shin would return to YouTube, uploading his first video since being kicked out of the Yogscast on September 30th, 2021. This would elicit many responses from Yogscast members, but in particular, I would like to read out Lewis's response. Just wanted to clarify and reinforce our stance, which has not changed in the last two years. Shin took advantage of his position to emotionally manipulate and sexually harass members of our community and our friends. These actions are reprehensible and he is not welcome in our communities. I would ask folks to be respectful of this and remain sensitive to other Yogscast creators, many of whom will not want to discuss him or be reminded of his content. We're always striving to make the Yogscast stronger and safer for everyone, and I hope that you can agree that this is a community we can feel proud to be a part of. Uh, hello. Uh, this is gonna be the sort of post-video commentary where I give my own uh, personal thoughts. Uh, first of all, I want to say that I tried to keep the video laser focused on just Shin and his actions. This video could have been three hours long if I included every single piece of supplementary evidence. 
But I wanted to keep this compact and informative. You may say that if I wanted to keep it focused on Shin, then why did I have segments dedicated to the management of Yogscast uh, and the fan reaction? Well, you really can't explain how Shin was allowed to operate for so long without mentioning how the Yogscast enabled his behaviour. It was pretty clear that during the Lewis and Terps livestream that Lewis hadn't even bothered to do a deeper investigation into into the accusations. He even made a Reddit post about it later on which, yeah, didn't age well at all. It's great that he apologised for it, but the damage was already done. If Lewis had examined the accusations like a better human being, then it would have prevented a lot of people from getting hurt. But he didn't, and he just has to live with it. A part of me wanted to be a bit more brutal on him, but uh, I don't think that would have did anybody any good. For why I included that rant on fans, again, I can't explain how Shin got away with it for so long uh, without explaining the fan mentality. A lot of victims who have tried to come out for years have just been brutalised by fans. These aren't young people, these are, these are adults who are in very deep parasocial relationships with their childhood idols. And will cannibalise anybody that dares slight them. This isn't a small minority of the community either. It's a pretty big chunk of it that to this day just don't want to believe the victims. Uh, I could have created an hour long separate video on this phenomenon. I've really never seen anything like this. People say that teenage dream or BTS stands are the worst fans, but honestly it's usually grown ass adults who should know better than to do this fucking horrible shit. It's very disturbing that no matter how many victims, ex-girlfriends, moderators, colleagues, or even close friends come out and call him out for what he is. They're just some men that will never believe victims. And let's call these people for what they are. They're incels. Uh, the ambiguity and the PR speak from the Uggscast don't help this either. It's been for years. He still hasn't been arrested. He's not even in the UK anymore. Uh, the police aren't some silver bullet. I've been around the internet since a very young age. I've seen people in communities who were very notorious pedophiles operating for years who just, despite being reported countless times, are still active. The police don't do fuck all. But what was the point of this video? Well, there really isn't any concrete, digestible video on what Shin did and his history of predatory behaviour, uh, so I've elected myself to do it. However, I wouldn't be able to create this video without the chroniclers of Shin's activities. Without just why Shin, problematic Yogg's cast, Yogg's pet Shane and White Cat, this video would have been impossible. And while, you know, some of these tumblers have the classic tinge of 2015 tumbler woke skull stuff, uh, their archiving of Shin is invaluable. It must have really sucked to watch if Shin got away with this for so long. Uh, this video doesn't have a conclusion. A situation like this never closes. There is no end point. I don't think Shin will ever face justice for what he's done. I do, however, believe that this video can make a difference. That if enough important people are made aware of the situation, that something positive can happen. I'm not asking this video to be shared for monetary value. I have zero subscribers and don't get AdSense. I just want more people to know about the situation. It deserves to be known. And if anybody in Yogscast management sees this, I really do believe you should be more vocal in opposing Shin. Uh, a Reddit post and vague tweets aren't good enough. People deserve to know. You don't even have to share anything that would compromise the privacy or well-being of victims. Just some sort of video where you sit down and explain, as human beings, what Shin did. No PR bullshit. As long as Shin is still active on YouTube and on the internet in general, he's still capable of harm. This is the time to make things right, to do some good. If anyone wants to contact me privately, this is my business email. Peace out.